This is Adrian Cronauer, the guy Robin Williams played on the movie Good Morning Vietnam. I just want you to know I always tune in to the News Guardian right here on Fox Radio 910. In 1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. Good morning. <laughs> that always puts a smile on your face. <laughs> well, the A-team's in. Let's do something. We keep getting told to do something as if we're not doing anything. So let's do something. So let's talk about stuff for an hour. Yay! It's more than just talking about stuff for an hour because it takes an incredible amount of time to get together the stuff to talk about and to find the facts we need to talk about what it is we found to talk about. Yes, and last I checked, you know, doing something would be entirely more helpful if there were more people doing it. Somehow, I guess that's our fault. Always. So, what are we going to talk about? Well, gosh, you had a really interesting story about local politics that I found quite interesting. Uh, yes, Valerie G Garner, who got me screaming last week, um, wrote an article uh, on her um, on her uh, news blog site about oh, where is it? Here it is, uh, titled um, "Roanoke City Personnel Policy Adds Prohibition." On political activity. So, which I find amusing that a Democrat would be talking about this. And then when she posted this online, you know, the comments are like people are all up in arms that, that there's political activity going on with, with city employees. <laughs> and and I, I'm... Anyway, we'll get to that. But why? This is why why anybody that, that's liberal would be shocked by this. I, I I don't know, but we'll talk about that. Um, Boehner has written an op-ed piece trying to justify why he needs to sue the president. Well, he doesn't do any of the justifying. He just talks about how it's desperately needed. Well, we all agree that something needs to be done. He doesn't justify why a lawsuit is the way to do it versus like what the Constitution says the that rules he's supposed to are do. to yeah. do it. Um, uh, Native Hawaiians are angry at the president because he's trying to turn them into a tribe. That is uh, fascinating. Uh, our president is sending uh, the U.S. Marshals and ICE in with riot gear to attack protesters who are protesting uh, immigration issues. They don't respect his authority. <laughs> you will respect my authority. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, our fa our favorite Roanoke Times columnist slash reporter slash I'm just a, a, a liberal tool. I don't know what uh, has written an interesting article about the about the uh, post office jobs that are leaving Roanoke. Well, as usual, he's it's not unusual for him to be right about stuff. It's just that he's right and wrong all at the same time, and he doesn't re he doesn't recognize the hypocrisy of his. Of the of the positions that he takes, because well, he's a liberal tool. Well, when he's wrong, he's just a commentator. When he's right, he's news. You got to remember, you get people like that; they get to have it both ways. Well, especially when you, again, is if you haven't noticed, if you go out to the Rono Times website, which I don't really recommend that you do, but if you were <laughs> to do that, you know, there's a news link. There's like a tab at the top that says news, and one of the one of the things under news is Dan Casey. So according to the Rono Times. What he says is news. It's not just commentation. It's it is. He's giving you news, news. I like the way he said that. You said that with a lot of what a gust of news, news, news. All right. So, uh, where do we begin? Let, tell me why. Tell me why Native Hawaiians are mad at Obama. Let's let's. This well, is just this is just intriguing. Well, I thought just first of all, I was born in Hawaii. 
so I found this interesting because I'm because I have a personal story. Really? Yeah, our president makes that claim too. I don't know about you. I was born in Hawaii. I don't know about you. I have a birth certificate and everything. Oh, Hawaii birth certificate. I hear you can get those with Photoshop. <laughs> it's what it looks like, honestly. So um, they want to create a new relation. The U.S. Department of Interior is holding a series of hearings about a new relationship with Native Hawaiians. Like a long story short, they're trying to basically turn Hawaii into a, ser a series of tribes so they can deal with them like they deal with uh, Indian tribes here in America. <laughs> so they can abuse them like they do the Native American Indians. Great. Now, the, the, <laughs> if you're not familiar with Hawaiian history, Hawaii has a monarchy. They had one until the 1890s when the U.S. staged a coup to take it over and so they could use it as a naval base. Basically, I mean, I'm over I'm oversimplifying it, but the they had a series, and you would think if they wanted to create a new relationship, the people, the native Hawaiians, would be happy about it. So the, the Interior Department held a series of hearings, and everybody that came forward was yelling and screaming at them that they wanted to be independent. They don't want to deal with the American government. They want to restore the monarchy. I don't blame them for not wanting to deal with the American government. I'm I'm solidarity. I'm in solidarity with the Hawaiians. Do they accept new members? Well, I uh, hope so. So, but here's the former Hawaii State Attorney General. This is the other issue that you'll find interesting, Greg. Former Hawaii State Attorney General Michael Lilly has said Native Hawaiians have no tribe and therefore the United States cannot enter into a treaty relationship. Quote, the current efforts to recognize a separate ethnic tribe by the Department of the Interior is unconstitutional because under the Constitution, it is the Congress has a plenary power to recognize tribes and ratify treaties. That's absolutely correct. Lilly said the, the power does not reside in the executive branch of the federal government or with the various states. So the current effort aimed at creating a tribe of Hawaiians is no legal basis. Not that that would matter to the Obama administration about legal standing or what the Constitution says their powers are. They're just going to go ahead and do it anyway. You will respect my authority. <laughs> so it doesn't, I mean, not that Hawaii is a hotbed of conservative values or anything, but I just find it interesting that at every step the, the Obama administration is willing to just ignore the Constitution and do whatever they feel like. Well, and it's, it's one of my Friends, maybe former Fred, I don't know, Ricky says, you know, the government and presidents, they've been breaking the Constitution since the very beginning. So, and, and our government is an evolving thing anyway, so we shouldn't get all bunged up over, over any particular, you know, not following of the Constitution, because that's just the way it's always been, Chip. Always. you gotta, you got to carry me for about 30 seconds while I plug in my laptop. Oh Lord! All right, then let's move on to uh, to the to the next story, which um, oh, we got a good one. We're going to save for you for later uh, for later in the week. Um, uh, all right, <laughs> you're I, you're just so comical watching you do this. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about um, Valerie's story. This is on uh, Roanoke Free Press, which is Valerie uh, Valerie Garner's. I banged my knee and it hurts. Website uh, headline: Amended Roanoke City Personnel Policy adds prohibition on political activity. Elected city officials tend to get a little overzealous at election time, according to Valerie. Either whining about the loss of a primary candidate they backed or clamoring for no change in who warms a city council seat. Mayor David Bowers made the latter clear in a March 11th city email to not only all of his city colleague, council colleagues, but to all council-appointed officials as well. Those appointees included the city manager, city attorney, municipal auditor, city clerk, director of finance, and the mayor's secretary. This, this is something that was discovered now, what we're about to talk about, by using a uh, FOIA request. The Commonwealth attorney, Don Caldwell, served as the Roanoke City Democrat Committee chair from 2010 to 2012 and used government email for committee communications as directed petition signatures were delivered to his office by the 2010 Democratic Primary Council candidates. The 2014 General Assembly House Bill 494 added a section to the code that directs localities to produce a policy outlining what is prohibited use of the locality's public property. Those bound by this policy include not only city employees and elected officials, but also constitutional officers, treasurer, sheriff, commonwealth attorney, clerk of court, and commissioner of the revenue. Roanoke's municipal auditor, Drew Harmon, passed along the charges, changes, <laughs> updates to Roanoke's personnel policy 
the policies were amended to not only include prohibition of using public assets for political activities, but also added language that comports to accurately, more accurately to the digital age. So evidently the old policy didn't prevent Don Caldwell from using his city email to do politics with. According to according to this, right. So uh, the well, shocking. I'm shocked that elected that constitutional officers and elected officials would use their uh, their city accounts to to help their own political causes. I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Well, it goes deeper than that because when I was working the city council polls, um, the last time I had an encounter with this, I was standing at Wasina, and. The person handing out materials for the Democrat candidates or one of the Democrat candidates was a city employee. And as I, you know, as you know, the hour or two hours kind of went on and I was discussing with this person, I just I found out that they were on the clock. They had reported to work that morning and then got sent over there to hand stuff out while they were on the clock being paid by Roanoke City. They were they were physically working an election for Democrats. So when Valerie posted this article and all of these people start putting these comments on here about, you know, how horrible this is and how upset they are, I'm confused. I thought this was just this was just the what this was okay with them. This is just the way things are. When did when did this become a problem for them? Well, and I love Valerie. You know, if she's listening, I don't want to make you mad, but it made her mad because it, it was, she was running in the election, and you know she's got a vested interest in him not working against her. So it only it only comes an issue when it becomes something that's contrary to her political aspirations. Uh, uh, so when they're doing it to 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 get Democrats elected that she likes, it's okay. When they're doing it to get Democrats elected when she she's running as an independent in the same election, well, then it's not okay. Well, I don't think she would think it's okay. I just don't think she would have gone through all the effort to 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 dig this up, to find it. I mean, all this stuff is, is out there waiting to be done by... I mean, Valerie did a good job of digging this up. I mean, I'm not trying to take away because it's a good story, and people need to know this is happening. The problem is, is this is standard operating procedures for a lot of governments, especially local governments, especially ones that is corrupt as local Roanoke City Council. It's just... And who runs Roanoke City's government? Democrats. Which party would that be? Democrats. Democrats. Not that yeah. Republicans can't be uh, corrupt. It's just that Democrats are much better at it. Well, and see, and, and the, the problem here is that nobody tends to want to do anything about it because they say, well, your guy did it too. Well, yeah, and if there's a Republican in office, then the, then the Dan Casey's of the world would dig the dirt out because they have a vested interest in, in showing the, their corruption. They don't have, I mean, the Roanoke City, the, the Roanoke Times and the Roanoke City Council currently constituted are in cahoots. They're, they're buddies, they're friends, they're, they're pals. So they're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to do this kind of research. And because, you know, the Star Sentinel is the, you know, the third tier of media in the city, unfortunately. So it is what it is. Well, it's, I guess, at least it's comforting to know that the double standard is alive and well and these people aren't doing anything out of the ordinary. Well, I hope Valerie is, I think Valerie has a little more intellectual honesty than the average liberal. I think she does. So maybe these kind of things will help wake her up. Like when she thought it was, she agreed with us when she thought it was, was prudent for people not to be forced to pay for other people's abortions. Was that the intellectual honesty you're talking about there? Well, I said more. I didn't say she was. Because she, was... she didn't. She thinks that, that other people should pay. And if they don't, then somehow their their rights are being violated, which is what got me so angry last week. It's, still, it's about all, to get me angry. Again. See, you're getting into when you get into the uh, paying for abortions. That's like that, that's, that's the holy. That's like the holy trinity. One of the holy trinity for liberals. So great. Because I mean, you know, nothing. If you want to get a cheer at uh, a Democrat function, talk about protecting the right to have an abortion, and you'll always get a big yay. Because that's the greatest thing ever. Making sure people can kill their unborn children. That's fantastic. Wow. That's that's best that's better than feeding the poor. I just don't know where to go with this, but I do know we need to go to break. We'll be right back. Fox Radio nine ten, the news guardians. News Guardians <laughs> on Fox Radio nine ten. Oh, I love that story. Welcome back to the News Guardians. I'm Greg. I'm Chip. And uh 
We are your News Guardians. As always, you can read stories on NewsGuardians.com as well as listen to podcasts from past shows. So if you missed a morning and you want to you wanna catch up, you can find them on NewsGuardians.com. I know. Uh, in fact, I've got a request in here for one of the one of the shows from Thursday where I talked about Mary Burton's email. Mary Burton wants to hear us talk about Mary Burton. She does. Well, yeah, because she gave she wrote one of the most cogent I, emails. I know. It was it was it was it was probably some of the best um, letter to my congressman writing I think I have ever read in my entire life. I have to, I, I'm honestly she <laughs> she nailed it with a pneumatic nail gun right through the heart of the congressman. I'm telling you, it was awesome. And it was it was only about you know three sentences long. So um, in fact, you should read it again. When we talk about John Boehner trying to explain why he, we should be suing the president, uh, we should bring Mary's words back. Sure, because um, it's because it's I mean, it, it's worth repeating. It really she she nailed it that nailed it that well. Um, so our favorite com columnist uh, DC over there at the uh, RT, <laughs> <laughs> keeping it on the QT, yeah. wrote uh, wrote an article about the uh, postal jobs that are that are escaping Roanoke. Four hundred or so, which is is going to be a huge impact on the economy and those. Poor families. Now, so. a lot of people are mistaken about what's going on. They're not moving, like, the post office. They're not moving the whole post office operation out of Roanoke. What they're moving is the sorting operation, which is about 400 jobs, and uh, though that will now be done in Greensboro. Now, whether those jobs relocate, I don't know. Whether they just go away completely, I don't know. But there's going to be 400 less jobs here in Roanoke as a result of this. Um, so what will basically happen now is if you mail a letter, it's going to go to Greensboro. And then it's going to go to whoever it goes to. Uh, it, will not, um, it will not stay here, which is going to add time to, to mailing. But... You know, supposedly this is part of a uh, you know trimming the fat in the post office and making it uh, and making it operate so they can get to so they can get to a, a situation where they're paying for themselves. They're not in, you know they're not uh, operating in the red. Is that essentially what's happening? Essentially. Now, what is uh, what did DC at RT have to say? Well, DC at the RT was talking about the any as I mentioned, he's right. There's a thing called the Postal Accountability Enhancement Act of 2006, and he calls this the the uh, the most insane law by Congress ever. That's 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 the title of the story. What does the law do? Well, if you can if you can parse through Dan Casey's almost ill Ill, Ill, Ill unreadable text, we call him DC here at NG. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> The, the law requires the Postal Service, which is not self-supporting, shocking. I mean, when Dan says it, it's just self-supporting without any government. Like, he's mad about it. I found that kind of funny. To fully fund so its... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> he, his problem with this law is that it would, it would make the postal operations pay for themselves? Well, he seems to not like that, but you know, he's, a, so, he's a socialist, communist... You know, whatever. So, to fully fund its retirees' health benefits for 75 years into the future. Okay, that's the way pension plans work. You set up a pension based on where you, how many th people you think you're going to have in the future. I know that's a hard concept for the news slash commentator slash uh, savant of the RT to, to understand, <laughs> but that's the way pensions work, Dan. Sorry. Uh, it also requires the money to be set aside over a 10 year period at a rate of more than $5 billion per year. I mean, the law itself wants to set up some accountability for the Postal Service to fund its very expensive pension plans. Now, he says that's even worse. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. The problem, the problem is that, and he's right, none of that money is truly being set aside. Instead, it's going directly into the U.S. government's general fund. And it's being spent on current government programs. Is he complaining about that? The set aside is a theoretical accounting gimmick. Those future retirement liabilities are actually being added to the national debt. Is, that, is he upset about that? Is that a problem for, for D.C. at RT? Well, who sponsored this cockamamie legislation? Okay, the problem is in the legislation. The problem is the way that they're, if they were actually funding their own pension plan. Yeah. 
and setting aside the money in a responsible way so that they could actually take care of the pension fan without having to fall back on the federal government to be bailed out, that would be a good thing. That'd be a great thing. That, so the legislation fact, isn't the problem. The problem is that they've taken the money. They're that stealing they're it. They're stealing it. They're putting, stealing the money. But I got news for Dan. They do that with your social security. Every time you get a paycheck, whatever that paycheck might be from the Rono Times, that you're, I mean, it just seems thievery to me, but you're getting a paycheck periodically from the Rono Times. I would say they're taking social security out and they're supposed to put that in a lockbox. That's going into the general fund, too. They're putting an IOU in that lockbox. Oh, so yeah, yeah we'll, we'll pay it back. Sure, we'll pay you back with that seventeen trillion. That's the way all of those, all of those. It all things works work. that way, Dan. Yes. That's the way federal. That's, everything the federal government does works that way. I mean, the, the whole system is broken. And you, know, you want to complain about this is the most insane. The whole system is insane that you support. Now, what we need to be complaining about is the fact that Roanoke City, in its infinite wisdom, run by the leftist, the most left of the left is losing another set of jobs. Another thing is closing in Roanoke, and more jobs are leaving Roanoke City. So the real story here is not how big an idiot Dan Casey is. The real story here is Roanoke can't keep jobs here. The city is Detroiting. We are Detroiting the Roanoke City under the current leadership. Well, that's With not the news, because Dan Casey is the news. We'll be right back. Fox Radio 910. This is News Guardian. News Guardian. I love your show, man. It's great. We just need to talk about it. On WFJX Fox Radio 910. I love your show, man. It's great. <laughs> I'm glad to see a younger demographic liking our show. No doubt. I think oh. they just like it when you yell and scream into the microphone and shake it. Is that what appeals to the younger demo? No, I don't think so. I think when we talk about uh, our irreverent style of talking about the local thing, I think would appeal to some. Some, uh, you know, it used to be, it used to be that uh, you know being rebellious. I'm more rebellious as a 48-year-old than I ever was as an 18-year-old. It's kind of funny. I thought this was supposed to work the other way around. It's my influence. See, I've been this rebellious ever since I can remember. Mm. But, I, you know, I was conditioned in, in part to be this rebellious because of the, the abusive, uh, full-of-crap nature of the authority that I've had to Did you not respect under. their authority? Oh, no. Uh -uh. Well, I, I, use, I mean, I started to, and I respect authority that, that, that deserves to be respected, but that's not a lot. Um, what, are you, what are we talking about next, Nancy? We're going to talk about the president sending, uh, sending federal, armed federal agents to attack protesters. People uh, uh, use, you know, exercising their First Amendment rights. Well, they can't let the First Amendment and the other parts of the Constitution get in the way of the humanitarian efforts to, to fix a problem the president created on purpose to create a humanitarian crisis to get immigration reform passed. Well, that and and. That's where we're at. This is from Houston, Texas. It says, as illegal immigrants continue to spill across the U.S.-Mexico border, federal authorities are attempting to re relocate the migrants from South Texas to housing facilities across the nation. One such facility is located in Merida, California, where a large group of protesters recently blocked a bus full of migrants from arriving. The protesters remain there adamant that illegal immigrants don't get dumped in their town, but soon the concerned citizens may be forced to step down. We have learned that federal agents plan to arrive in Merida on Monday, that's today, with riot gear, and they are going to attack the protesters. Well, they're going to ensure that the protesters, that the, that the busload makes to the housing facility. Jeremy Oliver, a resident of Temecula, California, Temecula, California, a there town that neighbors Marietta, told uh, Breitbart, Texas, that local police officers warned the protesters it's going to get ugly. The cops told them it's going to get ugly. Basically, the cops are telling them, we're going to attack you. At least they were nice enough to let them know in advance. Well, they're just trying to. They, they prefer not to have a video of riot gear, you know, poses, 
clubbing uh, a 68-year-old man holding an American flag probably is not the optic that the White House would like to have flashing across the CBS Evening News tonight. You will respect my authority. Well, that, that's what you're going to get. Hopefully there'll be people with cameras there. Hopefully the 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 copblock.com guys will will be there. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I've I've seen some other stories that uh, militia groups might actually show up to help the protesters. That would be interesting. John uh, Henry says we're being told that federal marshals or ICE will be here in the next few days. That they are planning to bring riot gear. They are apparently going to be blocking off the street with concrete blockades so that no vehicles can get through. The River County Sheriff's Department showed up last night and brought a huge watchtower that shoots up into the air 35 feet. On Friday, six protesters were arrested. One was apprehended for crossing the yellow tape that blocked protesters from the border station entrance. And Henry expressed frustration with the fact that the illegal immigrants are being rewarded for breaking the law. After illegally crossing the border, they receive a slew of taxpayer subsidized benefits like housing, food, education, vocational training, and legal counsel. Most are then released onto U.S. soil. It's fantastic. So instead of protecting the border and, and enforcing immigration law, which is the responsibility of our of our president he is instead thwarting that kicked into high gear the illegal activity and his attitude is just basically you will respect my authority. even if the authority even if the authority is not what the authority was granted in the constitution even if they're in direct violation of what the constitution says they're supposed to be doing even if they're violating their oath of office repeatedly but don't worry greg John Boehner's on the case. Which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So, are you comforted by the fact that we basically have a character from South Park sitting in the White House? Does that... Is the <laughs> well, I don't know. Cartman seems to have a, uh, a, a greater vision of what America ought to be than the current president. So, I mean, they seem to have about the same level of intellect. <laughs> either... either, either President Obama is as dopey as Cartman, or he's he's systematically destroying the country. You know, you pick your you pick your poison. I don't want to. I don't know what what drives the motivation of this president, but it's either either incompetence or uh, a willful uh, a willful axe to get to a certain place. I know conspiracy theorists like you like would lean towards the latter argument. And well, there's 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 no theory involved here there there is a conspiracy at work and it's not even a private conspiracy you can find out why this is happening if you simply read documents from the united nations you can go straight to the united nations website and you and you can and you can read the plan and the plan is and has been for two decades now to move populations from Mexico and South America into North America. Where there's more resources. Where there's I, more resources. The, I mean, I've this is not. Know. Yeah, this is not a. This is not a mystery. It's well, not. It's not just a just failure. Just because the UN, to, just because the UN says that doesn't mean that the 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 policy of the of the president is designed specifically to push that. Now, I'm not saying it's not. Uh, don't get me wrong. It very well could be. But you know, it, it certainly seems that way. In it's. That the whole thing about I mean, there's a on CNN there's a there's a story about how the I word is un-American. You know what the I word is? Um, insane. Illegal. The fact that they're illegal is a is an un-American mean thing to say about these immigrants. I tell you, man, the, the illegal. I mean, saying they're illegal is is so mean. The left is brilliant. Even brilliant. though they are illegal in the country, saying that they're illegal is offensive. They don't mind using the term illegal when we do something they don't like. In fact, uh, the, the gentleman interviewed in this article, Mr. Henry, says that when U.S. citizens break the law, they pay the price. If any one of us were to just roll through a stop sign, we would be prosecuted, he noted. But when, when, uh, when somebody outside the country who doesn't have, const doesn't have the same rights that we do when the Constitution breaks a law, it's considered to be a virtue. And they're committing a felony. It's a virtue. And, 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 and how dare you say it's illegal? That's just awful. And just you, like this guy says, they commit a felony and they get they get food and housing and training and a lawyer. And if you health care, if you if you just nonchalantly break a traffic law, 
an infraction, like not coming to a complete stop at a stop sign, if, if you continue to thwart the law at that point, they'll use deadly force to take the money from you for the ticket. What is wrong with this picture? But don't worry, John Banner's going to sue. Really? And he wrote an article saying why he needs to sue. Well, all right, let's take a break, and when we come back, we will find out how John Boehner is going to save us from all of this nonsense when we return to News Guardians on Fox Radio 910. News Guardians on Fox Radio 910. Well, I'm glad John Boehner's going to save us. Absolutely. Because, I mean, there's nothing like a good lawsuit. To, you know what? Because that lawsuit Ken Cuccinelli filed was so helpful. I've, I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assign a, a new sound effect to John Boehner. Every time you say John Boehner. Wow, that's the, that's the, that's the John Edwards. I know. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to add uh, Boehner to it, too. Oh, boy. All right, so John Boehner. So he wrote an opinion piece, and I'm, I'm going to try to do this without saying his name because I hate that sound. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, so according to him, he wrote an op-ed piece in the in, on CNN.com. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, Boehner is Hit the sound effect. You said the name. There you go. Is is his plan here? is to sue the president, to force the president to follow the Constitution. And he thinks he's going to get the judicial branch to issue a ruling saying the president has to follow the Constitution, and then that'll make the president follow the Constitution. That's, that's Boehner's master plan here. Um, so, <laughs> well, you know, basically he explains why we must now sue the president, but he never explains why suing the president is effective at doing this. And um, let, me, let me go back, as we mentioned, Mary, Mary Burton, who is somebody I've, I've dealt with in liberty politics for years, wrote an email to Congressman Goodlatte. And she really sums it up very nicely in just a few words. Okay, let's hear it. Suppose your lawsuit against Obama is successful. Don't you think you'll have to set a precedent that will forever give to judges the House's power? That's the start. Mm -hmm. So, again, as Mary understands, the, the, the Congress has power to do something about what the president is doing. And it's, it's laid out in the Constitution. They have two main things they can do. One is... Cut off the money. And two is... Impeach the president. Now, they, they can, the Congress can write impeachment proceedings if he is indeed... Doing something so bad that a lawsuit is justified, I would think they can make a case for an impeachment proceeding. Would that be logical? I, well, I think so. I think the most amusing thing here is that we've 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 reached a point where the Constitution is extreme and following it. You, you, we run into this all the time, where you know our our belief that the, that the, that the basic rule of how this entire country is organized should be followed is considered extreme. So of course, if the two remedies are cut off the money or impeach the president, those would be considered extreme as well. Up is down, black is white, red is green. Welcome to. Welcome to the socio-political horror show. We're your guides, Greg and Chip. But you know, I got a sound effect for Mary because what what she said is that is absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely right. There's more. Well, let's hear it. There's more. So she goes on. It's the people's house, and I resent you giving up our constitutional remedy for dealing with a dictator. Wow. Now, she understands the concept that power is derived from the people, and your representative, Bob Goodlaff for most of the listeners here, but Morgan Griffith or Robert Hurt for some others perhaps, they derive their power from the people who elect them and send them up to be the representative. And there's an expectation they're going to fulfill their constitutional duty. Now, Boehner talks about that in his op-ed, but... He acts as if there's no constitutional remedy in the Constitution. He keeps talking about so much about he's in violating his own constitutional oath in his own way as much as President Obama is. 
it goes, she goes on to say, if you can't fund, if you can't cut funds or impeach, those are the two things that he can do, then you are part of Obama's plan to fundamentally change the United States. Three or four sentences that say more than that whole stupid opinion piece in the CNN website. Well, I mean, come on. What do you expect? You know, it, it, it is John Boehner. I mean, you know, and Obama's saying, well, uh, the speaker's lawsuit is a stunt. You know, as much as I dislike the president and as much as I uh, ap ap appalled by almost everything that he does, he's absolutely right. It is a stunt. It's kind of like the, the House Republicans got together and said, you know, what can we do that will look like we're doing something to those crazy guys like Greg and Chip, those wide, those wide eyed conservatives who want us to impeach? But they, you know, they don't understand. We're in an election year. We have a chance to get power back, and we can't be impeaching the president and riling up the liberals. So, well, how do we do this in a way that'll be, that won't do anything but look like we're doing something? You don't think it's possible that they think they're actually doing something? I think it's kind of like liberals. I think some of them might buy the rhetoric, but I think the, the leadership probably knows this is ridiculous. I mean, Michelle Bachman's bought into this. I mean, everybody, oh, Michelle Bachman's great. Well, she buys into this. When she was questioned by Neil Cavuto on Fox, she was like, well, it probably won't work. I mean, she admitted on the... On the air, that is probably not going to work because, first of all, the, uh, any judge that has any sense is going to realize that they don't have any standing. They have a remedy for this that doesn't have to go to court. It's called their constitutional authority. It's so dumb that it, it defies description. Well, you realize our flaw here in 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 the way we look at this is they don't they don't have to please you and I. They don't have to please the 1%. They have to please the 99%. And the 99%, they won't, they won't look at this the way you and I do. They won't understand this in terms of, of the way Mary Burton, who also a part of the 1% here, uh, look at it. They will, they will, the theatrics of it, they're going to be, they're going to buy it. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to buy it based on an emotional response, take it hook, line, and sinker, and they're going to think that this is legitimate fighting back against the abuse of a tyrannical president. And all, for the most part, all of our reason, explanation, and, and constitutional quotations are not going to shake them from from that belief. So when it comes right down to it, Boehner, do Boehner doesn't have to please us. He just has to please them. Well, in the, in the left, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're taking this crisis that has been created by the Obama administration and saying, well, it's the GOP's fault because they haven't acted on immigration. Let me just give you some facts. Um, Obama has been, is a, is a 2006 law where he's supposed to expand that fence. You know, they say... Uh, a, Immigration support, illegal immigration supporters say all the time that offenses don't work. Well, they have a fence around the White House. And last time I checked, that seemed to keep people out. Just saying. So, but he's refused to build a fence that the Congress has authorized him to do. Um, they've captured 300,000 illegal aliens, and the, the Obama administration, before this started, had already stopped deportations. Uh, the Congress rejected the DREAM Act, so what did Obama do? Signed an executive order making it so. Uh, and then, of course, they, they've created this thing called the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, which they have in place already in 2012, that the, the House passed this law. Of course, it gives them prosecutor, prosecutorial discretion, which basically any discretion to take is not to prosecute. Like I said, it's as if the president said, you know, anybody that goes to a traffic stoplight, a, tra a stop sign, let's not prosecute them. Let's give you some discretion. And there's no discretion on stop signs last time I checked. And as, you, as you've talked about a number of times in January, the feds were advertising for uh, escort services for 65,000 illegal alien children because they knew this was going to happen. So we're buying prostitutes now? Mm. Uh, no. Escort what? services and, you know, a, a chaperone to get them from the border to their to that uh, facility. Because so. honestly, if you had told me we were buying prostitutes, <laughs> I wouldn't have been surprised. You heard of Cloward Piven, right? You know Cloward Piven. Oh, I know what the Cloward Piven strategy is. They, they've done it. And the, and the funny part about this is, you know, when, Ob when Boehner, when Boehner, when Boehner hit the sound effect, come on, Greg, wake up.
you started this nonsense, I'm, we're going to play it all the way out. <laughs> when he was talked about Obama's announcement, he called it sad and disappointing. That's the best he could come up with? Sad. How about outrageous? How about unconstitutional? How about illegal? How about criminal? Um, and you, you, know, you get this. I heard on the national news this morning. You're going to love this. They're, they're already putting in place. This is just like George Orwell. They are already putting in place the fake facts. To, to combat the real fact of what they did in January by, by advertising for, for transportation for all these illegals that weren't here yet because they knew they were coming because the administration was complicit in getting them here. So to cover for that now, they're starting to push news stories out there that say the, the exodus uh, from, from South America and Mexico started last October. So by January, then the, the, the new narrative that they're going to sell us using, using fa fake facts is going to be that this started last October, and come January, they had to advertise because based on the rate that they were coming, they were estimating we were going to have sixty five to 70,000 were going to be here by now, and that's why in January they were advertising was, was to be able to deal with the problem that they saw happening. The whole thing is a, it's a lie. This is, this, is, this is right out of George Orwell, which is they're, they're going to go back. You watch, they're probably inserting fake news stories that never existed with dates from last year to justify this new fact, which is all this started last year, not just in the last six weeks. Oh, yeah. I and mean, I mean, the always benevolent and always caring administration is then now working to, to help the poor children. Man, it's all bull. And Republicans hate children. I'm tired of living in a George Orwell novel, to be quite honest. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm ready to live in a Winston Churchill book. Because <laughs> Orwell's getting, this, this is getting on my nerves. In case you hadn't noticed. I kind of did. <laughs> I kind of did. So, where do we go from here? What's next? Well... I guess we can just uh, we all sit back and accept the fact that your freedoms are being taken away. And, uh, you know, uh, one of our friends would say, do something. Well, you could elect uh, Republicans to office who are complicit, like John Boehner. You could do that. Or? Or you could stop complying with the stuff. Withdraw consent? Mm-hmm. Are we ready to withdraw consent? Listeners out there? Are you ready to withdraw consent? Because our government operates. That's where it gets its power, from the people, from the consent of the governed. I think we're down to, we have nothing left but to withdraw that consent. Think about that. It worked well in the Civil Rights Movement. Yes. This is, a, this is the Civil Rights Movement of the 21st century. It, it, absolutely. It's, it's, it's time to revisit what works when getting the government to do what it, what it should do. Polite protests where you, you know, clean up your mess and leave, don't do anything. Locking arms and staying in places where you're not supposed to be seems to work a lot better. But that requires a lot of commitment. Think about it till till tomorrow when uh, Chip returns with Al Bedrosian on News Guardians. And stick around through the week because on Friday we're going to have our interview with Adrian Cronauer, the man that Robin Williams played in the movie Good Morning Vietnam. Until then, I'm Greg. I'm Chip. See you later.